Welcome to my little paintbrush. My name is Miss Cami, and since we can't go to the beach today, let's just paint it. I love this scene. This is where I want to be right now, so let's relax a little bit and enjoy this painting as much as we can, okay? Anytime we do um, scenic paintings, it's really important to remember to kind of relax and let things kind of happen on your canvas. The more intense and uptight you get, the more unnatural it looks. So take a deep breath. Remember, we're all learning and just try and have a good time. Okay, let's grab a nice large brush and get started. I'm going to go right into some water and loosen up my bristles. And what we've got on our surface here is a nice horizon line. This is where our sky and water meet. Okay, so it's nice and straight. And that's what you want anytime you're doing those horizons. So let's see, we've got some pink and some blue white and black, very simple palette. I love simple palettes. Let's go ahead and lighten our blue just a little bit to start, okay? This is a nice phthalo blue. Pull in some white and get a nice, nice medium tone there. Don't have to worry about mixing it super well because as it offloads on the canvas, kind of streak out and that's really fun too. So just kind of a rough mix, okay? So let's start at the top here, and we want to go side to side. So our brush stroke in this particular painting, the direction of our stroke is super important. We want to go side to side. We don't want to go up and down with it, so we want to keep this going side to side, just like that, okay? Now we're only going to go about an inch and a half before we're just going to start lightening this up by just adding white on our brush. Moving back and forth here. It's a great time to wrap your canvas. So every time I load now, I'm just loading white. I'm not loading any more blue. And I'm moving it up and down. If I start to lose some of the dark on top, I can go right back up there. Bring it back down a little bit. Okay, most important thing is keeping my brush strokes horizontal, okay? Don't try and go up and down with this. Moving quickly. When we paint with acrylics, they will only blend wet into wet. So if you're not going fast enough, your paint's gonna dry and you're really gonna miss out on a good blend, okay? So just more white here as we continue to move down our canvas and about almost halfway between um, the top of our canvas and our water line, we are going to start to go into some pinks a little bit, okay? So got lots of white, I'm gonna come in with some pink here. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna kinda turn purpley because that pink and blue mixing together. Okay, but notice how I'm coming back up into my blue. So I'm not afraid to get that pink up in there and I am working my brush vigorously back and forth, okay? That's important. Go back and forth, back and forth. You don't want that skyline to dry before you get a chance to blend it in. Now because we didn't wash our brush, we've got some blue streaks kind of coming off and that's super good. Okay, my brush needs a little bit of water. I'm just gonna keep going back and forth, back and forth. Blend, blend, blend. Blending as we go here. Okay, how we doing? Looking pretty good. So let's keep on going. Now we're gonna kind of switch from our blues to our pinks. I'm gonna wipe off my brush on a rag or a paper towel, but I'm not going to clean it. I still want some of that blue to come through. But now I'm going to focus more with my white and my pink, okay, as I start to come down here. Okay, I want to really showcase this pink. And as I do that, start to add white to it as well and start to let that pink have some of the show here. Be sure you're wrapping your canvas as you go, okay? Because we're doing this, this color gradient here and 
if we paint all of it and then go back to our edges, we're not going to have the same color on our brush. So up and down, up and down. Here we go, making sure we don't look like stripes here. We want to blend in and out, in and out. Okay, I'm just going to go for some white here. Lighten, lighten our sky. Keeping those strokes going. You can see we still have blue that's coming off of our brush. That's a lot of fun. Trying to keep my arm pretty level. What happens a lot of times when we do skies like this is artists, their arm will start to get tired and so they'll start to have that, that rainbow effect with their arm. So you just want to watch that. You want to make sure you keep that up as you go. So I added some paint to my brush. We're coming down here, getting into towards our waterline. I think I have a little bit too much blue than I like in my brush, so I'm going to make sure I wipe some of that off. Load with lots of white here, coming in to the base here. Get some pink on there, let the pink have a little bit of fun here. And as we get close to the water, I'm going to switch to the toe of my brush so I have a smaller stroke so I can just kind of control that a little bit more. See that? I just kind of switch to that toe there. Okay. If we get it in the water, that's okay. Again, blend up, blend down, blend up and down. Pull your stroke up into the sky, back down to the water. Okay. Gorgeous love it one thing to really keep in mind um especially when we're doing skies even though the sky is clearly the star of the show in this painting um we don't want to forget that there's going to be a moon and there's going to be palm trees and so we're going to cover a lot of this up so don't get stuck on exactly this look remember that we're going to add layers so let's wash the pink out of our brush We'll move into our water here. Let's give it a good rinse. So we're going to go into this shade up here. That's going to be our water. So again, I'm going to pull in some white, but not, not mix too much, and come down into our water. And this is a good sign that my brush needs water on it. Speaking of water, you see how it just kind of the stroke breaks. I need water and I need more paint on my brush. Okay, so you can see the difference there. Scoop it if you need to, especially when we're filling larger surfaces with one color, it's okay to. So just keep painting it in there, side to side, same as in the sky, you wanna go horizontally with your brush strokes. If your brush is offloading little bits of white, let that happen. If it's water, it's going to ripple, right? So any signs of that are super fun. So I'm going to slow down a little bit as I come up. I'm going to press my bristles, fan them out, okay? As we come up nice and close to that line, make sure you wrap your canvas here. And try and get a nice clean line. Gorgeous. Okay, so before we get into our moon, let's make a little bit of purple. So I'm going to pull some pink into this blue, okay? I want to make a beautiful, deep purple. So I haven't washed my brush because it just had a bunch of blue in it, so it doesn't really matter. But I want to make a good pile of some purple paint here. There we go, I like that shade. So what I'm gonna do is take my brush and a paper towel or a rag and I'm gonna press the paint out and the moisture, but I'm not gonna wash my brush, okay? So I just press that out and now I'm gonna load it with this purple and I'm gonna start my stroke off the canvas, kind of like in the air, okay? And then I'm gonna fan it in to my picture. Okay, so start off of your canvas and bring those brush strokes in 
and you want to focus that paint on the edges of your canvas there. Okay, some can come in quite a ways, some can stay closer to the edge, but it helps if you just think, start my stroke off of the canvas. Okay, you can switch to the toe if you want to in some spots to get a little bit different texture going. Load your brush pretty lightly. Don't get too heavy on your load here. And kind of brush that in and stay, stay on those edges of your canvas. So don't come into the center, okay? Let's do the same thing over here. This is called dry brushing. I tell people a lot of times think of feather on your cheek. That's the pressure on your brush. Okay, just kind of come in. You don't want to make a line. Okay, so you want some strokes to maybe end sooner than others. Bring some in further than others. And don't forget that this is just a step. This does not define your painting. This is just a step in your painting, okay? So keep that in mind as well. So bring those edges in a little bit like that. And anywhere we wanna add a little bit more. Again, switching to the toe to get maybe some longer strokes in there. Blend it really good. You want your vat, your sky to be dry when you go into that step, so keep that in mind, okay? Brush, brush, brush. Okay, awesome. Okay, we're gonna do the same kind of thing, but we're gonna do it in our water with our darkest blue. I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna load with the dark blue, and I'm gonna come into my water. I'm gonna do the same thing, kind of fanning this in along the edges of my canvas, keeping that dark along the edges, and it's lighter in the center. Okay, that's, that's the look you're going for. You can, what you'll see is we'll slowly, naturally get kind of a moonlight center on our water. That's what we want. And we'll add some light to that later too, but gonna keep going here getting nice dark shadows in our water as we move towards the center trying to keep our brush and our arm nice and steady as best we can okay awesome you guys Remember to breathe, remember to relax. We're having a good time. All right, so let's go ahead and wipe the dark blue out pretty well, okay? And let's load with some white now. And now we're gonna do it in the center of our water, okay? So now really lightly with white paint, we are going to now really show a reflection of the moon that we are soon to paint in our water. Do you see how it just kind of happens and it's kind of blending into that blue that we just did, creating this beautiful reflection right on the water here, just side to side. It's looking so awesome all the way down our canvas, keeping nice and steady strokes. Back and forth, back and forth. Switch to the toe anytime you need to bring it a little further out. We need a good blend. That looks awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and wash that brush out. We've got so much happening here, so much fun, beautiful shades of blues and pinks and purple. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put in our moon. Um, you just want to find a good circle. 
Um, this is my handy little circle um, that I like to use. You can go bigger, you can go smaller. Pull that tight here. We just want to find kind of a, a nice circle to use and we're going to center it as best we can and get your T-square out if you want to to make sure that you really have a good center or you can just eyeball it if you're feeling confident here. So here I've got a white um, pencil. Yeah, that's going to come through. A white pencil, you can use chalk. You can use a graphite pencil. That'll be fine too. I've got this white pencil, so I've got my moon shape in there just enough so that I can see it. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on that moon. We're going to load our big flat with some white paint and we're just going to start to fill in this circle here that we just put in and we want it as crisp as we can get it and we want a nice thick layer of paint here okay so as soon as you get your shape you can really just start to get it in there as thick as you can by loading your brush with lots of paint but before you do that, we got to get that shape. So press those bristles to help you get that shape. Really press. It'll help you get that nice, clean edge. Okay. And we're going to put some texture in this moon. So if we see some of our brush strokes right now, don't want you to worry too much about that. Do the best you can here to get a nice clean moon really crisp full moon okay there we go awesome okay let's go ahead and give our brush a nice wash scrub it out as best we can here and now let's make the color of our sandy beach that um, silhouette that we're going to have, okay? Now what I like to do is make a bluish gray color. So I'm going to take some blue over here, take a little bit of black, and some white. Okay, make it a nice bluish gray color here. If we get too much black, we can add some more blue. We'll need quite a bit of it. This is the color of our trees as well. So in our hammock, beautiful. Okay, let's go ahead and make the line in the sand, okay? A little hill. So let's just kind of go around here, dip down. Okay, make sure you wrap that edge. What I wanna do is start higher on this side and end a little bit lower on the other side. It doesn't have to be super dramatic difference, but I want it to be enough difference that I can I can see that it starts and ends at different times, okay? So go ahead, put that in like that, okay? Wash our brush, because we're not quite ready to put our trees in. We're gonna go ahead and work on some of our clouds swish 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 now for our clouds a nice scuffly brush is a good idea if you don't have a nice bristled brush like this go ahead and use a filbert you can even use a round but a scuffly almost like a stencily brush with the stiff bristles that's going to be your best bet but if you don't have access to one of those right now remember you can do this with a round or like i said a filbert is no big deal either so Let's move into our purple. I might have to make a little bit more for our clouds here. So I'm gonna have a nice purpley cloud. I love to play off of dark clouds when there's a nice full moon. Oftentimes we think of clouds as being, you know, white, but it's fun to do these dark ones. Um, so let's go ahead and wipe the majority of the paint off you don't want too much paint on your brush, and clouds tend to scare people, so deep breath. 
Our first cloud is going to be outside of our moon and it's going to come rest just up here. Um, and we're just gonna start to swirl our brush. See, just kind of these little cloud swirlies here. Just, just swirl to the left, to the right, okay? Just like this. And billow. And then kind of take your brush and flatten the base of it, just like that. So billow these clouds and then a flatter base. Okay, billow. And you could take some of that and even brush it down more. Billow as high as you want. Remember clouds tend to be kind of our triangle shapes, okay? So that's basically our cloud, and we're gonna do um, three of those. So there's our first one. Let's go over here. This one's gonna come slightly into the moon, okay? So let's remember that. Start kind of at the top billow, and then we're just gonna keep moving our brush. This is really all about muscle memory, guys. So. Don't be too hard on yourself. Just remember, super light pressure and keep your brush moving, okay? Pillow and then flatten the bottom. We'll come into our moon a little bit more here. You can see some of my brush is offloading a little bit more blue than other parts. So that's kind of fun. But just a nice little Feel really light with our brush, okay? All right, we've got one more cloud and it's gonna come lower. It's gonna come off the page right here and it's gonna come into the base of our moon just a little bit. So again, we'll billow up and around. I like to talk in a really light voice when I'm, when I'm doing my clouds. It helps me remember Slight pressure. Don't forget we'll have palm trees. Don't let the clouds define your painting. Okay. Don't forget to be kind to yourself as you paint. Come up here maybe. If we've lost some of this one in the blue. Give it another layer. Okay, so we've got three fun clouds in there. Okay, let's go ahead and wash that brush really good. Scrub it out. Okay. And dry it. We want it dry because we're going to continue to use our scuffly brush. We're going to move into our moon with it this time though. Okay, so here's our nice moon. We want to add some pink. Here's the thing with moons, they're kind of intimidating. I, it took me a long time to embrace the moon texture. But what you want is a really light, light pink. And you want a really scuffly brush. Sometimes I just scrub it on my arm even, make sure it's not too much paint. And then I start to just scrub my moon. Careful, your clouds are still wet, right? And scrub my moon. Go around the edges a little bit. And then if I'm feeling brave, I can go in with some darker pink, okay? Make sure my brush is nice and scuffly. I'll just scrub in kind of a circular motion, okay? Kind of work around. Okay, I'm skipping sections. So I don't want to scrub all over and lose my white moon, right? I want to keep that moon nice and bright. If your, if your brush is too wet, you're not gonna get a good um, scuffly. Really wanna hear that scuffle happen on your canvas, okay? So make sure that it's not brushing really smooth. You want it to really just scrub, 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 scrub. And like I said, you can kind of come up and work around those clouds and 
leave some of that bright white in there okay, and just scuffle 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 swirl it around working with the canvas work with the, the moon you've got now if you've lost some of that white come back in come back in with with white on your brush and kind of give that moon back some of its bright white okay you want to have some bright white sections Think about looking up in the moon at night. What do you see? Kind of stay true to that. If you're more comfortable painting your moon before your clouds so that you're not working around the cloud, you can totally do that. I have just taught myself to work in sections until they're nice and dry. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to just kind of add a bit of white back up in here. Got a little too pink for me. Okay. Right, scuffle, scuffle all the way around your moon. You can even just kind of stamp, stamp, stamp if you want to. If that makes more sense to you. And just keep working with it and maybe even stand back. A little bit and take a look at it and see where you're at okay you might let it dry for a minute and come back to that section and lighten it up a little bit but I think right now we'll just let it be while we've got some paint some pink on our brush let's add a little bit of dark touch of white and let's play on these clouds a little bit add a little bit of pink to them okay try and keep that kind of up at the tops of your billows, like it's kind of coming down, the light shining on the tops of them. Okay, just kind of scuffle, scuffle, round and around. Oops, got some in the sky, rub it out. Just adding a little bit more depth, another layer, okay? We go here. Beautiful. It's coming together nicely. Super fun. All right. There we go. I like it. Okay. Let's go ahead and wash our little scuffle brush out. Okay. We'll come back to it. Like I said, I think I might add some more white on the top of that moon. Well, let's go ahead and switch to a round brush and let's start with our palm trees, okay? So let's get a nice round brush wet and let's go to that bluish gray that we made. A fun bluish gray color. And let's dive in, okay? Now, if you're feeling a little insecure about this step, maybe you want to take a piece of chalk or pencil and put in your trees first no judgments that is totally fine okay but i'm just gonna go ahead and just jump right in my i've got two palm trees on either side of my moon that's kind of opening down where my hammock will be okay and they're all a slightly different size this one's going to start <clears throat> just kind of below the moon and we're just going to come down with it and then press as we get closer to the base okay Come down and it's bending that direction. Okay. It's a nice palm tree here. So there is our first one. Okay. Now we've got another one that's slightly smaller and it starts just barely above our water line. Okay, but it's also bending. Okay. I want to keep that bend happening so we kind of want to arch it around like that <clears throat> awesome all right now let's go over here we've got on this side we've got a shorter one and then a super tall one that reaches over this cloud right here okay so this one's gonna come just about here and we're gonna pull it down like so and once you get your main line in, you can kind of 
start to add your bends to it a little bit. <clears throat> kind of keep the back of it a little bit straighter like that. Okay, now here's our big tall one. Make sure you're adding water to your brush, keeping the paint nice and loose. Our big tall one's going to reach all the way over and it's going to touch this moon up here. So we're going to try and avoid getting branches in our cloud because we worked really hard on that. We want to showcase that. But we're going to let this one come all the way down just like that. So it's a really nice big one. And then we can kind of clean up that trunk a little bit more pressing as we get to the base of it. Making sure there's that nice bend in it. Remembering palm trees kind of have all those lumps going down them, so we're not going to worry too much if our got kind of a lumpy trunk, okay? All right. <clears throat> now we get to do our frongs. I hate saying that word every time I paint these. I just call them branches because I don't like that word, so we're going to say branches, okay? If you've painted these palm trees with me before, you know I can't stand saying that. So we're just gonna say branches and we're gonna almost make it look like a starfish, okay? So start at the very top. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, there we go. Don't think about it. Remember I told you at the beginning, don't think too much about it. Okay, now we're gonna start at the very um, beginning of our little uh, branch. And we're gonna start to feather down. Do you guys see you're making a palm tree? All right, let's go up to this one. Same thing. Start to feather down, down, down. Oh my gosh, want to go to the beach right now. That's what I'm thinking as I paint this. <clears throat> All the way, and then you can even add some coming up the other side. Remember these, these branches, they hang, right? And the wind blows them all over the place. They're just not very stable. Now this one's blowing up towards us, so we're going to kind of do it in more of a feather. We're going to push those up. So think of that kind of blowing up that direction, okay? So just think more like a feather and pull those up. Okay, now let's come down and back down. These are hanging now. Beautiful. Again, you can add some coming up the other side. Oh, these are so fun to paint. If you are not having fun, that's okay. They can be stressful if we are doing them for the first time or, or painting for the first time at all, or maybe it's not your first time, but you're just frustrated with it. Don't give up, just keep working at it. Awesome, okay, now we just have to do the other ones, all right? So, again, start at the top. Start making your kind of your, your starfish, okay? Just like that, this one's itty bitty, it's in the background. Brush it down. Down. Just like um, anything I've said before, speed is really your friend, okay? If you slow down too much, you are going to get shaky, you're gonna think too much about every single brush stroke, and you're gonna get frustrated. So make sure that you're just embracing this journey with me, okay? <clears throat> 
All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I like seven. I, I like odds. Sometimes I do eight, but I'll notice I do. I'll do seven quite a bit. So pushing those fun branches out. Pull it up if you need to. And coming around the other side if you feel the need. Now this is our one that's going up like, like a feather, okay? So we gotta kind of work with that a little bit here. Don't let that trip you out too much. This one's gonna come out this direction. It's okay if it makes contact with that other tree, no big deal. Our other palm tree. Fan them out. All right, here's our last one. Kind of hanging a little bit lower down here. Maybe have a few that are coming off that side. Oh, so fun. I'm feeling like we're at the beach already. Okay, let's do our last one. This is our biggest one. Okay, so let's feel confident here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's my seven. I'll stick with seven and see if I need an eighth one on this big tree later. Okay, let's brush those down. Nice long brush strokes there. Switch over to this one. Beautiful. Alright, oh, and it's getting kind of tricky to find a spot to put my rest my uh, hand here. Feel free to totally flip your canvas if you're struggling with that as well. This is why I had mentioned before. Don't worry too much about your sky and your moon and your clouds and everything because we've got all this happening on our canvas, right? So it kind of distracts from all those mistakes that you may have seen earlier. There's a few coming out the other side here. This one's looking nice and full. Come down to our last one here. I don't think I need an eighth. This looks so fun. All right, it's time to put in our hammock, you guys. We're gonna freehand our hammock, okay? So follow my lead. I will not steer you away here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let's go ahead and get a detail brush. So a nice little one. Let's get it wet. Loosen up that bluish gray color we've been using that's so gorgeous against this uh, pink and purple background. And let's come down here right between our trees, okay? Now what I want you to do is I want you to make a smiley face right here, just right in the middle. Just make a smile, okay? Then I want you to go straight down on one side of your smile. On the other side, I just want you to go meet that corner, just like that, okay? And then just fill that in. You can even switch brushes, which I probably would suggest so you don't damage your detail, but, you know, here I am, so. Clean up that edge, okay? Guys, that is your hammock, okay? All right, now we're gonna put a triangle on the top of this guy, a line right down the middle, and then one on either side, with little ropes. We're gonna do a little 
little circle right here. And then we're gonna connect it right to the tree. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this other side of our hammock. So this time we're gonna start at the tree and we're gonna meet our hammock right there, okay? Then we're gonna start in the same corner and we're gonna take straight line down towards the hammock, okay? Because the wind, of course, is blowing our hammock. We're gonna create that little circle right there where it's connected to the tree. And then we're gonna do two little lines in here to our hammock, okay? Just like that. Nice and steady as you can with your hand to get that little hammock look, okay? Awesome, you guys. Come down here, let me just clean that up. Okay, let's give that brush a wash. Good job. You guys are killing it. If you need to pause and take a break, do it, no judgments at all. Okay, I just got my flat brush ready. Now I'm just gonna kind of mix in to that gray. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to a corner of my brush. I'm just gonna come down here and kind of lighten up because of course we've got this beautiful moon that is reflecting onto our sand here. So let's kind of play on that a little bit just kind of brighten up our little little hills sandy hills here just like so brighten those up and now let's go back to our round and add some light into our palm trees and our hammock this is our final step so let's really enjoy this I'm gonna take my round the same one I used for all my palm trees and I'm just gonna lighten up some of this nice gray. I don't want it too light, okay? But I just want to add a bit of light into my fun little palm trees, okay? So once you've had a nice bit of light, just come down and not every single, um, not every single little leaf and branch that you did before. You don't want to overtake your awesome trees here. You just want to add just kind of that extra layer there, okay? Just that little bit of light. Okay, if you're not loving the color, you can bring in some blue, which I think I'll do. It's turning a little bit too gray for me. There we go. And that's what you gotta do when you're mixing your own colors, is you have to constantly kind of decide all right, am I happy with this? And don't be afraid to say, no, I'm not, and go back and start again, okay? Then we'll put a little bit of light down our trunks here, just slightly down there. And again, just kind of brighten up. You can see, like I've said over and over again, speed is your friend, right? <laughs> Don't want to overthink this too much. All right, awesome. Let's go up in this big guy here and let's add some in there. You can even go and say, oh, I want, I want a little more light right there. This is your painting and so you get to choose all of those little details. And that's the best part of being an artist is you get to control your piece, okay? So over here we might go a little, a little darker, a little bit more in the shadows than the other ones. There we go. Okay, down our trunk, a little bit of light, a little bit of dimension. Let's go over to this final little tree here. It's also good to add just another layer of paint. You can see that it's really um, filling in those fronds. Man, 
I know I've got some some students right now laughing because I just have the hardest time saying that word over and over again in class. All right, down our trunk here. And now let's go right into our hammock. Let's lighten the top, come down this side a little bit. Just kind of brighten it up. I'm even gonna go right into my white. So I have a nice light blue. I'm just gonna add some light right in that corner there. And then just down here a little bit as well. Awesome. This is beautiful. All right. Let's give our brush a good wash and let's just dot in some stars, okay? With the bottom of our brush, let's just give some light to our sky here. Remember, stars kind of cluster, so keep that in mind. And let's just brighten it up. These stars, I feel like, just add that final bit to this painting that I love so much. Remember, I was not quite happy with my moon, but my palm tree just covered up what I was going to go back and fix, so that's what happens sometimes. We just decide, oh, it's not even bothering me anymore. So you shouldn't judge your piece until you're all finished with it. Okay, so let's just cluster a few up here. Let's go down here. I don't want the stars to detract from all the awesome things happening on the canvas. So I'm not going to put too many in. And of course, don't go over your clouds. But I just want to add a few here and there. Kind of brighten it up a little bit. And this is my idea of the perfect night on the beach. And stars were definitely involved. All right, you guys. Last thing to do, we need to sign our work. So let's move to our detail. And let's pick a color. I think I'll go with a really light grayish bluish color here loosen it up and find a good spot to sign your name I think I'll go over here make sure I got a nice I think I'll just go right here and sign my name I hope that you guys had fun today painting this beach I hope you felt like you were on the beach yourself and I hope you can paint with me again soon. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye-bye.